I'm just finished uh, stopping or trying to get out of the most gong showed hotel I've ever been in my life. Um, supposedly, it's like the largest hotel in Canada. It's massive. Like some like 64 stories or something retarded and a block long. And it's got a. Uh, it's got the. Uh, front desk services of a small holiday inn. So, I guess I can go this way. And I'm in Toronto here. And I'm gonna try to, can I go this way? There we go. So I'm at that hotel there. The uh, Chelsea absolutely clogged up right now with people it's got people on the outside trying to get in because uh, it's got about one desk for that whole place super smart super well designed um you know just put it in perspective you go to freaking new york new york and las vegas they got about six desks these guys literally have one desk but that's enough of that um I am in Toronto, uh, if you don't recognize the place already, and I'm just going to head down Young Street on my way, I'm going to go to Niagara Falls today and just check that out, do the tourist thing, uh, since I'm close by, and this is Young Street, which is like, I guess, kind of the main shopping district, it's got a little bit of uh Kind of like Times Square, I guess, would be the equivalent, maybe. I'm not that familiar with Toronto. But, uh, yeah, this is where all the tourists come. And it's got a mismatch of a bunch of things. Lots of good shawarma, lots of good Vietnamese sandwiches. So yeah, Toronto's been fun. I caught up with a buddy of mine, Matt Trudeau, and uh, just kind of hanging out, drinking. Um, saw the sites like the CN Tower, uh, Distillery District, Kings and Thing Market, Chinatown, all that type of stuff. Um, went and saw a tattoo exhibit, which Matt's actually helping to put on. That was at the, uh, the ROM, the Royal Ontario Museum, which is like the biggest in Canada. Um, what else did I do? Mostly just walked around. It's a good walking city. There's an old HPC building. Um, so the vibe in Toronto is very much, I call it, uh, Loyalist New York, which is basically the history of it. I mean, uh, more or less started by the Loyalists as they left the States and, uh, named it York originally and, uh, grew from there. I'm glossing over a lot of things, but it's more or less what it was. Pretty short one. I'm just gonna go down New York's. I should hit the highway. Should be able to see the CN Tower from there. Um, and York, Fort York, which I went to too, which is, you know, basically a little tiny freaking 1790s fort in the middle of a giant city. And it's kind of like the opposite of Halifax, where Halifax is a medium, small size city and. Uh, and they got this giant citadel in the middle. Toronto's a giant city, it's got this tiny little fort. So yeah, I think the best bet is just to take the freeway. And get out of here. Oh, that's super hot on Hockey Hall of Fame. So yeah. So Toronto's like third largest city in the world or in North America actually right next to uh, it's basically New York LA Toronto and of course it's the biggest city in Canada 
Um, it is kind of everything New York is to the States. Um, gone away, Vancouver is uh, LA to Canada. How do I get on here? Um, what else? The, the roads are definitely better than New York, though. They're a lot smoother. But that's not really saying all that much. Fuck, where is that? CN Tower and stuff should all be over there. I'm gonna pull over here, I think. Find a place to hide. For where the hell I'm going. Oh, there's the CN Tower. I'm just looking for a place to pull over. Yeah, there it is. I think it was the largest building from 73 or something to like 2000 and something. I went up all the way to the top there. Yeah, it's pretty fun. I should check it out on my Instagram. But I now need a place just to pull over for a split second and check out where the fuck I'm going. There's an aquarium here, the Toronto uh, Rogers Center or Sky Dome or whatever they call it. The baseball's played is here. Fort York's over there, probably won't be able to see it. I did take some photos though. On the whole, you know, Instagram page again, take a look at that if you want to see it. It's pretty cool. It was a major battle of, uh, major battle of the War of 1812. The Americans actually won that one after a few defeats, and then I think the third time around it was went back to the British. was kind of switched over in and out a few times. Um, actually, pretty nasty battle, from what I understand. I mean, you know, that war wasn't huge. It was like 2,000 people against 1,000 Brits and Canadians. So, uh, what else? There's the distillery district, which is over to the left of me. That was cool. There's a a nice brewery I like. Uh, okay, I don't, that's not it. Uh, what else? Well, it was called Mill Street. Um, pretty decent beer company. Uh, checked out that yesterday. Uh, hung out with a buddy who's a beer snob too, so. Uh, Went all down through uh, the Greek town and had a couple pints. And, um, and, uh, you know, the Rome, that's another cool thing. Right now I'm at the waterfront. Didn't go in any of the streetcars. Though they do have a, uh, I did try the, I went on the subway to travel around. Uh, they have a few festivals here too. Not quite the level of uh, of uh, Montreal, though it seemed. Now uh, Kensington Market was a cool little place too. A bit of a hipsterville. Uh, you know, a lot of those clothes made from hemp and bubbly tea made from fermented mushrooms, that type of thing. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, that's basically all I did. The traffic's actually not too shabby. I mean, I mean it's a Sunday day in the middle of the day. It's been hot. 
with 30 degrees. There's the streetcars. They got a kind of a weird mix of brands making new ones and ones that look like they're from the 60s. Yeah, Toronto's a good time. I mean, they come in the summertime though, where it's like freaking boiling hot. Uh, so yeah, Toronto's kind of the place everyone thinks of in Vancouver when it says, you know, something happens in Vancouver, the weather's bad, and oh, it could be worse. They usually mean they could be in Toronto. Um, as much as the summer is pretty brilliant here, like I said, there's been heat waves and it gets super, super hot, I guess in a lot of ways like New York. Um, it also gets super, super cold. Uh, you know, like, like, you know, plus 30, the negative 30 plus, even worse, like negative 40 probably. Um, so it's pretty, pretty extreme weather changes. Uh, so usually, for some reason too, it's kind of the, the city most joked about out west city everyone loves to hate this one of the older ones granted there's probably that much thought process in Vancouver about Calgary there's a really old track train or uh closer to what they have in San Francisco. But yeah, Toronto gets a, a bad rap, I think. Though it's mostly uh, mostly a joke, I think. Kind of a sarcastic type of thing so I'd live in Toronto I could see myself living in Toronto if it came down to it what was I gonna say so yeah a lot more Caribbean food a lot more Ethiopian so that's a big thing in Vancouver now uh, mostly in commercial street a little bit more Greek influenced, I noticed. There's a Greek town in Vancouver. Oh, uh, Lebanese, because uh, Toronto's, you know, from the friends I did, I've, I've had from Toronto, they usually, the shawarma is, uh, is kind of known, or the, the famous drunk person food here. You know, kind of like how Philly has the Philly cheesesteak. <laughs> New York, I guess, steak and uh, corned beef sandwiches. Montreal has a smoked meat sandwich, which I did have in Montreal, which is amazing. Um, I'm not a big fan of the smoked meat sandwich normally, but I guess when I finally had one at this famous uh, deli, it was just, oh man, one of the best things I've ever had. Um, uh, you know, but anyways, back on it, you know, of course, Quebec and, well, Quebec in general is known for its poutine. And which is now that's more or less a Canadian uh, I mean that's that's spread throughout Canada I mean that's everywhere now I mean you can get a poutine in, in Victoria pretty easily there are different takes on it you know if you're ever in Victoria stop by the uh, Irish Times and get their uh, their blue cheese poutine holy Christ that's good but um, I digress here it's usually the, the Quebecers and the French that uh, are the masters of the poutine <laughs> So, uh, Toronto is known for its uh, shawarma. Oh, the other food is the doner, which is actually from, uh, I think it's based on something like the shawarma, like whatever the original was, or the gyro. And then it's modified by the Hala, Hala I want to say Halifaxians, but they're uh, Halagonians, Halagulians, they like to call themselves. And it's got a, it's basically just a, a gyro, but it's considered you know, yogurt sauce, it's got a sweet sauce, garlic sauce on it. Um, and it's a spicy beef meat. It's mostly just meat on a on a thing too, but I had that in Halifax, that's awesome. But here it's the shawarma, which is 
Lebanese and, and pretty good. Um, you know, when you get it fresh, it's really, really good. I had one down on Young Street and, uh, and uh, yeah, I liked it. There's Lake Ontario, I think. You know, the Great Lakes. Yeah, Toronto's a good place. Definitely check it out. You know, the, the GTA has been pretty cool. I mostly stayed downtown and went out to the eastern part for a bit. Actually, there's a, a famous YouTuber from Canada. I think he's in Calgary. I watched, I was one of the first guys I got into watching. And, uh, he uh, recently got, I think he probably got in shit for it actually, but uh, he was talking about how Harley drivers are, are all assholes, or Harley riders. Um, I, yeah, but, you know, he's going off about how Harley, he doesn't understand why people would ride a Harley, because there's, there, you know, there's better bikes out there for speed and for everything else, and, and he's right, I mean, you know, you don't buy a Harley for the fastest bike on the planet, though, there is this weird, uh, weird obsession with giant engines in them, you know, it's why, why Victory put it in a 106, just a just piss off Harley in their 103 at that time. Anyways, he was shit talking Harley guys because you know he doesn't get it, and you only you only buy a Harley for um, for the lifestyle, right? Which is true. I mean, you buy a lifestyle with a Harley, it's why they're twenty three thousand dollars for a bike. That can, you know, it's mostly just, it's really a stylist, stylist choice, right? I mean, it's why you go with a, with a engine that still has, a, still has a push rods. So I guess you could argue reliability, but. To be fair, also Harley's come a long ways with its reliability. I know it's been known for being a, a shitty bike, but they are a little bit better than they used to be. But yeah, I am mean, defending Harley's here. But he said, you know, he doesn't yet understand why someone would do that other than just to have the lifestyle and to be a douchebag. Um, man, uh, I guess in car terms, the only ones I can think of would be the Morgan. There's a couple other examples there, like uh, there's an Allard Mark II, that's a good example. But yeah, I mean, you know, you you, know, you buy the, the, these bikes like here, like this one even, there's, it gives you like a hot rod kind of feel. The same guy, way guys still build hot rods, I mean, you know, they, they put in a, a flat head V8 from a Ford that produces like, I don't know, 80 horsepower or something retarded, and you know, the point is, is no, they don't go super fast, but it's kind of a... Kind of a fucking well, it's a stylistic exercise for like I said before. And second of all, there's a certain feeling about that that it gives you. It's kind of hard to explain if you're not into it or if you haven't ridden one. Um, you know the heavy the, the heavy torque of you know a big V twin like this and and all that. I mean, of course the guy did have a, a Ducati for a while, so I'm sure he knows how that feels, but. Uh, uh, it's, it's just, it, you know, I guess you either get Harleys or you don't, and he doesn't, so I guess I can't really fault him. Pretty good website, um, as, I mean, look it up, obviously. I mean, he obviously has a lot of viewers. I think he's got a couple hundred thousand. And, uh, so it doesn't, doesn't mean me to point it out, but uh, it's a pretty, pretty decent, pretty funny podcast. So yeah, that's my poor, shitty ass uh, way of trying to defend uh, Harley riders. But uh, yeah, there is some assholes out there. I mean, when I was in Texas, you know, I met the two different types of the guys that just like cruisers and like this, you know, they're into the style more than they're into the substance, I guess. Um, you know, and they'll come up to me, ask me about my Victory and stuff like that. And they don't care about riding a metric bike or a Harley or a Victory or an Indian. But then you get the hardcore, hard, hardcore Harley guys that, you know, I pulled up to some and they just scoffed at me and, you know. 
basically looked at me like I was something something retarded. Um, but yeah. So I get what he's saying. You know, I've seen the the Harley guys blow past people and weave in and out and just be total douchebags, but. I'm sure there's guys in victories that do that too, and and let's be fair, there's guys in sports bikes and uh, naked bikes that do that too. So, I mean, there's douchebags on it, two wheels. There's uh, there's douchebags on four wheels. You know, like I just I was just making fun of uh, fucking coat hangers. Um. Uh, I was gonna say, you know, there's douchebags in uh, Honda Civics, there's douchebags in Beamers, and sure, those cars do tend to, uh, those cars and certain bikes do tend to, uh, attract those type of people, you know, I've heard people shit talk, uh, Jixer guys, because they tend to, to, uh, attract all the squids, right? It's like the, the squid bike of choice is a Jixer. Um, you know, you, you hear people shit talk H. Harley Davidsons because they're the they're the MC bike of choice, and and uh, you know because of that, that it attracts all the wannabe uh, bikers. But you know, there's some cool people on both, so. You know, I got a buddy who's got a Jixer. He's not a fucking hooligan. You know? He's a, he's a big sap, actually. Because, you know, this whole little crying, whiny speech after every fucking ride about thanking, thanking, thanking Jesus he survived another day in Victoria on two wheels. Which I don't blame him. Uh, or it survived another day in Richmond slash Vancouver. And uh, I, I can get that. Uh, it is luck a lot of the time surviving that fucking city on two wheels. But, um, you know, it's a beautiful place. Yeah, you know, pulls at the heartstrings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's a total sap. Um, and not a hooligan. So, the, like, you know. And same with Harley, guys. You know, I met, I've met some really cool people. Uh, I met a couple in Quebec City there. And, you know, they sat down with me and... We had a meal, and they were talking about Quebec City, and they're from Montreal, and then they lived in Vancouver originally, and well, the one guy did, and you know, we were talking about the differences between you know East and West, French and English, and uh, you know some of the you know biking and what to take a look at, and you know I had a, I had a good time, you know, super friendly. Actually, some of the friendliest people I've met are on Harley's. But at the same time, some of the biggest douchebags I've ever met are also on Harleys. So, you know, I saw I saw a guy on a bright green, uh, probably was a Heritage Classic or something, bagger. You know, definitely a Harley with some sort of patch on his back. Not a nothing I could recognize, like a major MC, just fucking howling down the highway weaving in and out and cutting people off and you know a good chance he didn't have any baffles and you know didn't even wave to me as I went by as I waved so you know or maybe maybe I'm not being fair but you know definitely gave the impression of being a douchebag You know, maybe he's part of an MC. Still a douchebag. He'll just shoot me, I guess. Um, or stab me or try to beat me up with his friends. But, uh... But, you know... What can you do? So that's my two cents on that. Um... Hmm. You know, uh, hit like, share, hopefully. I need to always get a few more subscribers. Though, uh, I'm up to like 150 or something. That's actually not too bad. You know, not a thousand, but you know, I, 
more than I thought I'd get. Um, and, uh, you know, thanks again for anyone who did subscribe. I appreciate it. Um, you know, hit the like if you like this. Comment below. You know, throw down some questions if you want. Um, maybe some stuff I'll cover and, uh, you know, you get me on a certain good topic, maybe I'll cover it in a video. I'll give you a shout out. That type of thing. I thought about doing a live podcast because I'm, I'm a bit addicted to, you know, um, some some smaller, well, some of the, you know, atheist channels and they tend to do a lot of live hangouts like uh, Pip Monk and, well, Pip Monk mostly. Uh, Amazing Atheist doesn't do it much and a few other ones don't really do it all that much, but, uh, oh shit. So one thing, Toronto's got really bad marking of, uh, Streets, India or me, or a lot of places do actually. Vancouver's got these big, uh, big, big signs. That, you know, tell you what street they are. It's pretty easy to find. Every city I go to, I'm having issues. They got tiny little fucking small ones half the time. Anyways, I'll call it there. Um, hit like, and I'll do a little video when I hit Niagara Falls. All right, thanks again. Yeah.